One baby chick. Two baby chicks. One fluffy goat. Two fluffy goats. Stella is not happy about us taking her babies for a little bit. This will be a good training for Salem. Yeah. Her little tail. Good girl, Salem. Good girl, you just smell them. Ears, hey. ears are not toys. <laughs> ears are not toys. She's already bigger than the baby goats. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tails wagon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so hard because they're so fun to chase. Yeah, they're fun to chase, but we just smell and we don't chase. So far, Salem thinks everything is a toy and everything is something to play with. So it's really tempting to chase the chickens when they run or the goats. But this is just like a step-by-step -step process. We gotta just keep doing this every day and get her used to them and hopefully she won't go after them. But she knows they peck her nose sometimes. So she's a little bit wary. Is she? Yeah. Sometimes they peck her nose. Oh. Good girl, Salem. It's like, it's not fair. They get to peck me, but I don't get to peck them. <laughs> I know. That's a hoof. You can lick the hoof. Oh my goodness, Lydia. Baby goats. So cute. You are such a cutie. He gives like a side eye. Yeah. Hi. You've got cute little feet. <laughs> oh, that one's so cute too. That one's cute because it has like white underneath. Mm -hmm. So at first they looked a lot alike, but now we've figured out that this one right here looks most like Winston because he has the blue eyes and he's a little bit more multicolored. He has more white on him. You look just like your daddy. And then this one has more of the yellow it looks they look gray right now but they're gonna turn yellow like Tilly's and this one looks a lot more like Tilly well I guess they both have the little buckskin face this one has more brown so really similar but just a few slight little differences he also puts his ears back more like Tilly does so a couple days after our mama's deliver, we just keep watching them and making sure that the babies are growing. I like to give the mamas a little B12 injection because it really helps with stress and all of that. It just helps them get through that healing process a little bit faster. So not everybody understands why I pull the babies. And I guess unless you own goats and you've owned Nigerian dwarf, these little miniature goats, you really can't understand what it's like in the middle of labor. You all also are only seeing like 10 minutes of a full day of labor with a goat and so there are just moments when it's better to pull on the baby even just putting a little bit of traction on that first baby can help the mama a lot because you never know how many more babies are behind that first baby and you just want to help mom along and so she can keep going and have the energy to push out the other ones I'm tempted to do a video on the next delivery of the full day and at what point we decide to intervene. So when you're watching our videos, just know that I've been doing this for about 12 years and I'm pretty familiar with the process by now and that I'm gonna make the best decision for our goats based on all the information that I have and each individual goat. Okay, so we've looked at you guys' name suggestions and we've put them all into a poll. So go click on the link in the description to vote. So which one is your favorite? Ah, uh, Toby. Come on, I love Toby. It's so cute. That's a cute name. Toby. You doing okay there, Tilly? You doing okay? He's so smart. See, he looks up at you. He's got like Tilly's... Yeah, Tilly's curiosity. Yeah. And he's a little bit mischievous, just like we thought, guys. Oh my gosh, guys. My lilac plants just flowered. 
Look how pretty that is. Oh, so hopefully they'll crawl up this side and go over there and we can train it to go that way. And when they get about here, the goats will eat them. But still, that's so pretty. That's gonna be such a pretty walkway. I don't know how they always mess this up. How do they mess this up? I always shove it up here. <laughs> Need to nail it. The silky that's in this one, she's a little bit mean. She's a little bit mad if every time I try to get an egg. I don't want to get pecked. Okay. Got a stick. This is a better stick. Hi. You okay? Okay. Do you even have any eggs? No, I don't think she does. Ah! <laughs> you are mean. You're smart too. Have a stick. <laughs> Karen's nice, right? Yeah, Karen's super she nice. Bite me? No. Hi, Karen. Be nice to me, okay? I just want to take your unfertilized children. Oh, this covered in poop, Karen. She's like a statue. I know. You say they don't peck you and then they peck me. I don't want to reach under there because there's chicken poop all over. Okay, we'll wait. We'll wait until she gets out of there. Don't be mean, Karen. Be nice, okay? It's okay. <laughs> well, Lydia, baby goats are in the chicken coop. Gosh darn it. Are you having fun out here? Just doing whatever you want all day long? You're better than your sister, huh? You're out here. <gasps> she knows! The second we come over here to confront her, she's like, <gasps> she knows she's in trouble. You're not supposed to be in here. That is a naughty goat. We've been hanging up the chicken feed during the day so that they can't eat it. Yep. Just like that. These are like the twins, the little I know yin and yang. <laughs> They're like opposite coloring. Yeah. Little teenagers. Hmm. Don't bite me. They're gonna be bred though in May and June. Oh goodness gracious! She does that because she She's, wants yeah. the attention. She's yeah. jealous. This nice. is Tilly's daughter and this is Willow's daughter and they're gonna be our next little breeding does. Make so cute babies, huh? So they'll be bred to Zorro in like the summer. Oh, my oh. goodness, that hurt. <laughs> okay. Don't be jealous, don't be jealous. You give her attention. I'll give little Winnie attention. Stella's become less attached to her babies though. She's not crying for them as much. Yeah, and they don't depend on her either. And Luna doesn't really care. Oh, Luna. You watch over them sometimes though, right? So it's funny, the babies love to play with Fern, believe it or not. And Fern doesn't, Fern doesn't mind. She likes to hang out with them. Which is so funny because she kind of wasn't very lovey towards her own babies. It's like she likes to be an aunt more yeah. than she likes to be a mom. Just doesn't want to have full responsibility over them. <laughs> and then there's Willow. Doing good? Hmm? Just gonna go hang out. Bye. <laughs> Willow's legs aren't looking too bad. I think that they're slowly, slowly improving. Huh, girl? <laughs> and Hermione? Well, <laughs> I don't know. Do you think she's gonna have six babies like last year? I think she's, I don't know, she doesn't look as big as she did last year. I think she's going to have a little bit less. Yeah, maybe she'll only have a few. Hermione is due February 26th, and usually she delivers right around that due date. I remember last year it was like that day she started to build a nest, and then we had babies that night. It was so funny. Hopefully everything goes as smoothly as it did last year. Today we're gonna make a really good dinner from our goat's milk. Since we're only milking Fern right now, this is all thanks to her, and she's doing really well. We've got a quart of milk from her yesterday morning, and then at night I started some goat cheese. By simply adding the milk to a pot, raising the temperature to 86 degrees, and then adding a Chev goat cheese culture. 
I stirred it up and then just let it sit on the counter overnight for about 12 hours. The next day you can tell that the cheese worked because it's completely set and now we just need to drain it. So I'll hang it up in the kitchen and let that sit and drain for about six hours or so. It feels sort of weird to let cheese sit out like this, but once the culture has inoculated the milk, it's safe at that point and it can sit out no problem. So we're gonna let that drip pretty much all day. And then when dinner time came around, I got started on this really great pasta dish that I'm gonna share with you guys. We're gonna start by seasoning some chicken with my favorite dad's seasoning from Hoppy Goat Farm. And we'll just pan saute this, let this cook and brown up while we're doing some other things. If you're hanging out on TikTok, you've probably noticed that there's a feta cheese tomato pasta dish that's really popular right now. But ours is gonna be different. I like to use roasted red peppers because it's so much better. Start by chopping up lots of garlic and then some onions. The cheese is fully drained, so all I really need to do now is add some salt and then we'll be able to put this in the pasta sauce. The good thing about making goat cheese is there's lots of leftover whey, and since I'm not gonna really use it for anything, we'll go ahead and throw it out to Hermione. She'll love it. I only need about half of this goat cheese, so I'm gonna save some of it for later to put on toast or other stuff throughout the week. The chicken's done, so I'll put that on a separate plate, and I'll use the same pan to get started on, of course, sauteing the onions. We'll cook those down and get those nice and soft and caramelized. Next, we'll add the roasted red peppers and then the garlic and let that meld together. This sauce is so easy. All I do is add the sauteed onions, peppers, and garlic to a blender along with about a cup of goat cheese and a cup of the pasta sauce. After it's blended, it turns into this beautiful, rich orange color and oh, it tastes amazing. So we'll add this to the pasta, get that mixed, and then I like to cover it as the pasta sort of soaks up the sauce. We've just got to head to the garden and get a few more things, some parsley and a little bit of cauliflower and broccoli. I have to admit, I've been eating up this broccoli so much that <laughs> I'm almost out of it. It's so good fresh that I'm not even going to steam this tonight. When broccoli is homegrown, it doesn't have that peppery taste. It has a very mild, sweet taste. I love it so much. The parsley will be chopped up real quick and then we'll add it to the pasta which has now soaked up a bunch of that sauce. We've got this beautiful rich roasted red pepper and goat cheese sauce along with some chicken and fresh veggies from the garden. This is the definition of a perfect dinner in my opinion. I'll put the link in the description below and you can try it out. Let me know what you think. Lydia, we need to share with them why Ethan has not been on the videos very much lately. Okay, should we share the news? Yes. The news is that Ethan has returned to school and he has been living in our back room which we have turned into an apartment. Yes. Scary. Ethan, are you alive? Do you need any snacky snacks? <laughs> Got a lot right here, I'm good. How do you like going to school? Uh, it's painful, but <laughs> it's okay. You prefer it? Yeah. Yeah, so. it's kind of nice to be with friends and stuff. Sure. Kind of nice to be back here on your own time, do whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. So because Ethan's senior year is next year, he really wanted to hang out with a few of his friends that are graduating this year. So we made the decision to have Kevin and I move out of the master bedroom and um, basically switch places with Ethan. So we set up the master bedroom, even though we just made it beautiful for us, we made it beautiful for Ethan now. So we set it up with like snacks and breakfast stuff and a little mini fridge and everything. So while he's going to school, he is quarantined from us. So I don't know if we've said this much, but we have been a lot safer during COVID because Lydia has pretty severe asthma and her pulmonologist wants us to take extra precautions. So we've been pretty much this whole year on lockdown and we haven't really done that much except for all the fun farm adventures. So 
having Ethan go to school is like, whoa, like this is a new thing because we've been home, he's been home this whole time. But we're excited for him because he really wants to go and have fun with friends and all that stuff. Ethan isn't gonna be too much in the vlogs because we have to kind of stay distance from him. If you do see him, he'll have a mask on and he won't be too close to us. But yeah, so he's sort of like independently living in our master bedroom and uh, Kevin and I are just sleeping in Ethan's room. So that's fun. So what does it feel like to be a single child? <laughs> oh, wow. All the attention. I know, I, I'm overwhelmed. I have the puppy to keep me company. Yeah, so. you have a new sibling. Yep, he, Salem has completely replaced Ethan at this point. <laughs> yep. Just taking a little bit of extra precautions. Ethan still wears masks at school, so uh, he'll probably be fine. We're just being extra safe, like a lot of you I know have had to be. Thanks for watching today's video, guys. If you want to watch the video where we first got Salem and see how much she's grown already, click right here.